So are you ready to hear my story? Yes. Well, let's see how this goes. Okay, so uh, I am a college professor, uh, which of course means that I have the most interesting job in the world. And that of course means that currently I am doing the most interesting job of my life. But one summer I actually uh, did the second most interesting job of my life. And one of the things that made it really interesting was I got to wear a bulletproof vest. Uh, at the time, I was a graduate student at Ohio State, and even though I had some really tough students, that was not why I wore the bulletproof <laughs> vest. Uh, I actually spent a summer working for the Columbus, Ohio Civil Service Commission. And the Civil Service Commission uh, did testing for civil service employees, including police. So they were responsible for administering tests designed to measure uh, the knowledge, uh, the skills, the abilities, and other characteristics needed to be an effective police officer. And in doing so in a way that was minimally biased or ideally unbiased against uh, protected classes such as African Americans. That work involved a lot of data analysis. And I could have spent my entire summer uh, in uh, the office analyzing data, but I had the coolest boss ever. Uh, Kay did not want us to keep our heads in the clouds of data. She wanted us actually out in the field learning about firsthand what people did on the jobs for which we were testing. So one day Kay said, Michael, uh, how would you like to do three eight-hour shifts doing ride-alongs with the police? And so my inner adolescent who never died, who always wanted to be a police officer, was quite excited, and so I said yes. So within a few weeks, I went for my first ride-along shift. And by putting myself in the shoes of police officers, I, I learned, I saw many things. And one of the things that I was most struck by was how much of their typical shift was defined by boredom. For eight hours, we were sitting in the car in a parking lot, driving, sitting, going for lunch, sitting. Eight hours of boredom that was occasionally punctuated by, interrupted by sheer terror. <laughs> As uh, was the case one night uh, when our shift was ending at 10 p.m. at about 9.55, we're rolling into the uh, parking lot. Uh, of the station and there's a call that goes out regarding a stabbing. Minutes later, I am sprinting behind my officer as we run down the narrow space about three and a half feet wide between two adjacent houses looking for unknown persons with unknown weapon, quite frightening at night. We turn a corner and then right there, just inches away, is someone looking out from his back porch and I was relieved that this was, this was not the person with the knife, and I was also relieved that I didn't shit myself because this person was unexpectedly right in front of my face. And I saw how frightening it could be to be out at night as an officer, and I saw the ways in which they manage those threats. So for example, approaching a person who's been pulled over and walking as closely as they could to the side of the vehicle so that if the person did have a weapon and turned out, it would be quite difficult for that person to threaten the officer before the officer managed to uh, defend himself or herself. And so I saw on the officer side the threats that they face. Oh, and as an aside, uh, when I went to the station, uh, I learned a little bit of how threatening the officers might have uh, felt because I was told to just walk through the lobby and walk straight to the uh, locker room and introduce myself because they would have been told I was coming. But as my officer later told me, they didn't know I was coming. And so when I walked in, uh, large black man, unexpected civilian, shirt bulging with a bulletproof vest, uh, they got quite anxious. And every hand in the room, except for mine, moved inches closer to the officer's weapon. And the officer told me this in the car, and I later said, well, making a joke, I mean, I was wearing the vest, so I would have been fine. And he said, no, obviously, we would have all aimed at your head. And so, <laughs> now, this, of course, is a, is a joke that's it's funny. Uh, maybe not as funny as it used to be prior to the events of Ferguson. Uh, but it's, it's still pretty funny. But one of the things that I actually thought about, apart from putting myself in the shoes of the officer, was putting myself in the shoes of civilians. So there was the young girl, about six years old, who called us on a 911 call because her grandmother was unresponsive and we arrived and the grandmother was dead. And without tears, uh, she still stood on uh, the porch and told us uh, uh, with little affect about this. And I thought, what has hardened uh, this young girl? 
or there was the young man who was pulled over, young African-American man. And even though I don't know that there was probable cause, my white male super cop officer spent 20 minutes searching this young man's car, leaving him in the hot sun on the curb. And I thought, what must these experiences have done to harden these individuals? And so I really saw both sides of the thin blue line, and what it left me with was what might be a trite, but perhaps true observation, which is on both sides of the blue line, life can be, life, can be hardening and life can be hard. Thank you.